Now let's talk about importing data into Paraview. So far, we only generated objects with the source menu, for example, a cone or a sphere or a cylinder. But of course, in Paraview, you can read data from a file. And Paraview can understand probably a couple of hundred different file formats. Uh, this is a partial list that I compiled maybe five or seven years ago. And you notice that a lot of file formats here start with VTK, the Visualization Toolkit Library. For example, there is a VTK Image Data, a VTK Structured Grid, VTK Unstructured Grid, and so on. We'll talk about VTK file formats in a few minutes. Notice that there are also many familiar packages here. For example, OpenFORM is an open source package for fluid dynamics. Anzo is a galaxy formation code. Fluent is another package for our fluid dynamics. Flash is an astrophysics code. Uh, then there is uh, Gaussian, which is a chemistry uh, simulation package, and so on. So a lot of popular packages output data in fairly standard files, and these can be read directly by Paraview. If you find that there is a file format that Paraview cannot read or you cannot easily import your data into Paraview, and this is spatial data that you should be able to visualize in Paraview, please let me know and I'll be very happy to help you import your data set into Paraview. Now, let's start with a very simple example. This is the only example in the entire course that will not work for all of you. And actually, it is very likely that for most of you, this will break. Uh, there are a number of reasons. So this file is a raw binary. Raw binary means a bit-by-bit -bit copy of a data structure from memory to disk. So here we have a mathematical function that is uh, sampled at 16 cube on a Cartesian mesh, and the function is defined inside a unit cube. And then uh, this three-dimensional array was copied bit by bit from memory to disk. Because this file contains only data, it does not contain any data description, any metadata. When you import this file into Paraview, you actually have to tell Paraview everything about the file. So you have to tell it that there is a single variable, it's a single precision variable, it's a three-dimensional, data extent is one to 16 in each dimension. Uh, the data byte order, which is the order of bytes in a word, in a number, is little endian. You can optionally provide the name of the variable, let's say it's called density. So let's try to read this file into Paraview. On macOS, in Paraview 5.8, there's a bug that will prevent you from reading this file. In fact, what will happen when you read the file, Paraview will crash. And this bug actually goes back some number of versions. I'm not sure if this is something that is unique to the Mac operating system or it exists on other platforms. But here, just to show you how to read this file, I'm going to start an earlier version of Paraview, Paraview 5.3, which is a few years old. And here I will go to File, Open. In my home directory, I have subdirectory called Paraview. And in here I have, inside of data, file simple data.raw. Paraview looks at the extension of the file and it makes a guess about the file format. I need to choose raw binary files. And here, before I, get, before I hit apply, I need to fill in all these uh, properties. So I have to tell Paraview a little bit more information about the file. So the data there is float. That means single precision floating number. Order of bytes in the number in a number is little endian. It's a three dimensional variable. And then data extent is one to 16 in each dimension. Number of scalar components is one. And then the name of the variable, I'm gonna call it density. So now I hit apply and the file was read. You can actually verify. You can go to the information tab and you see that, yes, there's an array called density. It's single precision float. Uh, this is the data range, roughly from 0 0.04 to 0 0.9394. And then it's a 16 cube array. And uh, let me click again on properties. And then in this drop down menu, I'm gonna to switch to surface view. And then here I'm gonna color uh, the surface by density, the only variable that we have in this data set. So here it is. Let me switch from surface to wireframe view. Here we go. Let me switch to 
surface with edges view. Let me switch to a volumetric view. So this is ray tracing through the volume and you can see the function quite nicely. Now, this is the only example that might not work for all of you. And in fact, most likely it will fail. Uh, as I mentioned, there are a number of reasons. First of all, Paraview 5.8 on a Mac has a bug. It will crash when you try to read a raw binary. As I mentioned, I don't know if this bug is unique to Mac or exists in other operating systems as well. More importantly, a raw binary file is not portable across different computers and platforms. When you download this file, you unzip it. All these operations can modify some of the bits, for example, the end of line characters, making some assumptions about what these characters should be. In other words, some of you already have a corrupted version of this file. Also, when you read a raw binary in Paraview, you always have to supply a description, how many variables inside, their dimensionality, spatial extent, precision, little versus big ending, and so on. It will be extremely tedious to enter all this information when you import a file. So the bottom line is that you should never use raw binary files to store data. They're just not portable and they lack metadata. Instead, you want to use a portable data format that you can write on one computer and read on another and do it with different applications and libraries. There are hundreds of such formats and we will cover several of them.